Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the six capitals as they relate to integrated reporting. In the prior session, we looked at integrated reporting and integrated thinking. We also discussed value creation as it relates to integrated reporting. Now, to create value for the company and its environment and its stakeholders, we need resources. Resources means what? We need things, assets, physical assets, non-physical assets, people, so on and so forth. Resources refer to as capitals. They contribute to the organization ability to create long-term sustainable value. The integrated reporting framework lists six capitals, financial capital, manufactured capital, human capital, social and relationship capital, intellectual capital, natural capital. Now, if you know anything about Farhat, anytime I have a list of items, I will go over each item separately, explaining what each capital or each resource is, then giving you examples to understand the capital in the context of integrated reporting. Let's go ahead and start with financial capital. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello, everyone. Are you struggling with your CMA exam preparation? Do you feel that your review course is moving too fast, too brief, or not covering topics in depth? Well, if that's the case, at Farhat Lectures, we can help you. We build your confidence through in-depth explanation, not memorization or reading the slides. What we will do is we provide baby steps approach to break down complex topic so you can truly learn, understand the material. How do we do so? We offer video lectures. We offer practice MCQs. We offer true false questions. We offer exercises. We offer the notes. Understanding the material is the first step in passing the exam. Once you understand the material, you have gained the confidence to pass and you can pass with Farhat lectures. What can you do now? Start your free trial. You have a two-day free trial. Take a look at it. Give us a chance. Your risk is zero. You like it, you keep it. You don't like, you cancel. Give us a chance. We can help you pass the CMA exam. Financial capital refers to traditional financial measures. Like what? Revenues, profit, investments, return to shareholder. Here, the organization create financial value by generating profit to its shareholders, to its pro profit, to its capital providers. They want profit and they want to ensure sustainable economic performance over time. Integrity reports here show how financial strategies align with long-term goals rather than just focusing on the short-term profit. So from a financial perspective, they want to show you their long-term plan, not only their immediate or short-term plan. The company might report in its financial performance gen how they generate profit through a diverse portfolio of consumer goods. Why? Because if you're concerned about finances, well, they have many products, a portfolio of consumer goods. It discloses key financial matrices such as revenue, operating income, and shareholder return to illustrate how the company delivers consistent value to its investors while reinvesting profit for long-term growth. So the financial capital is simply put, how are you generating profit? Show me. Let's talk about this. That's one capital because you cannot survive without capital, without money, without profit. Manufactured capital, this include, as it sounds, manufacturing facilities, physical assets like factories, building, machinery. Value creation here looks at how these assets are managed and utilized efficiently, as well as how innovation and technology improvement drive productivity. So tell me, how are you using those manufacturing facilities? For example, you might be upgrading equipment to reduce waste and increase output because this is going to create both value for the company and its environment. If you reduce waste, Guess what? The environment is better. If you reduce cost, the overall company and the shareholders are better off. So in this section, in the integrated report, when you talk about your manufactured capital, assuming now, I, I, I got to mention this, that not all companies will, ha will have all six capitals, because if you're a service company, you don't need 
physical assets. If you're a company like Google or Facebook, you don't manufacture anything. So you don't manufacture, if you don't manufacture things, you don't have that manufactured capital. So in their integrated report, the company might highlight how these upgrades reduce cost, improve productivity, and contribute to more environmental responsible operation, and how reducing cost will improve the Financial capital, which is the one that we talked about in the prior session, which is what? Which is financial capital. So all these capitals are interrelated. One thing would lead into the other. The third one is human. Human are the people that work for the company. What does that mean? It means it involves your employees, how skillful they are, how well being developed and trained. So organization here can create value by investing in their workforce through education, training, proper promotion, job satisfaction, ensuring diversity and inclusion. This is how the company will create value through its human capital. This could also include how the organization fosters a positive culture. People that works there, they want to work there, which contribute to long term productivity, innovation, and happy employees lead to happy customers. Again, we're back to the financial lead to more revenue. So the integrated report here might emphasize their commitment to employee development by providing extensive training program and promoting diversity and inclusion in its workforce. So in the integrated report, the company will emphasize those points. We spend money, time on improving our workforce. So the integrated report might detailed initiatives such as leadership development program, if they have any employee wellness initiative, for example, they might give each employee $200 a quarter to spend on gym equipment or a gym membership, which contribute to higher employee satisfaction and retention, thus creating value for the company and its people. So this is how you create value. Yes, you're investing in your employees. That's an expense. That's the value creation is those employees are happy, you retain them, and they will create value for you. Social and relationship capital, the fourth one. This involves relationship with customers, suppliers, community regulators, the outside. Here, the company creates value by building trust and maintaining positive relationship with its stakeholders, which is everybody else. How do they do so? Maintain ethical supply chains and engaging with local communities can enhance your reputation trust and social license to operate contributing to long-term success. The most important one is trust and you got to enhance your reputation and maybe contribute money to the community, to local events. Don't pollute. Don't do anything bad in the community. So the company builds a strong relationship with suppliers through something maybe they call partner to win program, ensuring sustainable sourcing practices for raw material. So for example, you tell your suppliers, if you use organic stuff, I will buy from you. If you deal with, if you practice sustainable practices, I will supply from you. So I win, you win, we all win. So by working closely with suppliers to promote ethical practices and fair labor standard, the company enhances its reputation, builds trust, strengthens its, strengthens its supply chain, benefiting both the company, the community, its suppliers, the producer of these goods and services. The fifth one is intellectual property. This includes knowledge, innovation, proprietary processes that differentiate a company in a market. And intellectual property is very important these days. Uh, it's a large portion of a large portion of any company, especially tech companies' assets, are intellectual properties, the know-how, the knowledge. Also, pharmaceutical companies, the same thing. So intellectual property is very important. We call it in accounting, the traditional term is intangible asset. So value creation occurs here through the development of new product or services or processes that gives the company competitive edge. How are we? How are we? growing our intellectual property, intellectual capital. So integrated reporting highlight how, organiz how the organization is investing in what? R&D, because R&D leads to intellectual capital or how the company is investing in innovation or new technology to drive future growth. For example, the company invests in research and development to create innovative, eco-friendly product. That could be something st clearly stated in this report, assuming they do. Or it might develop new packaging made from 100% recycled material or introduce water saving technology for its product. Again, that's another way to enhance your intellectual capital. The last but not least is natural resources. This refers 
to the environmental resources such as water, energy, raw material. Integrated reports here capture how the organization manages these resources and minimize their impact on the environment. Here we're looking at sustainable practices like reducing carbon emissions or conserving water to do what? To create value by ensuring long-term access to critical resources, water, and improving the company's relationship with regulators in case of carbon emission and the communities in case of water consumption. Now, the company might be committed to a plan where they reduce their footprint near zero by, for example, the year 2039. That could be an example. So in the report, in the integrated report, the company might describe effort to decrease carbon emission across its supply chain, reduce water usage and managed waste more effectively, demonstrating how it creates value by minimizing its impact on natural resources. And in the prior session, we looked at the Anglo-American company. You could take a look at those examples to see how all these capitals are used in practice. Now, bear in mind, not all capitals are equally important. And bear in mind that not all companies will have all six capitals. So the six capitals are affected by the organization business activities. They could also increase, decrease, or be transferred. For example, how can you increase your financial capital? Generate more revenues, book more profit. You have more cash, you have more financial capital. Now your natural capital might decrease do an incident like an environmental leaks like bridge petroleum well they basically lost that oil uh, in the gulf of mexico that could happen or you could discover new wells intellectual property might increase by filing a new patent or they might decrease when patents expires or challenged legally again not all capitals are equally important or exist for any organization for example, some organization may not have intellectual capital altogether. Some organization, they don't have natural capital. They don't have natural resources. They don't deal with that. If you're a technology company, why would you need timber or oil or to mine anything? And bear in mind that one capital might decrease at the expense of the other one. Uh, for example, just to give you an example, a technology company might invest heavily in R&D to stay competitive. In this case, what's going to happen if they invest in R&D, their financial capital would go down. Why? Because you need to fund R&D. As you fund R&D, you're funding your human capital, you're funding your intellectual capital. With this decrease in the short term, you're increasing intellectual capital. Also, when you invest, also you're investing in your employees and the people that does R&D. And the reason is to develop new patent and product and technology. And the reason is to, at the end, increase the financial capital, the financial resource. So this trade-off benefit the company in the long run as the growth and intellectual capital leads to innovation, to new product, generate future revenue back to the money, ultimately boosting financial capital over time. So notice we go back and every and every capital, we go back and says it's going to eventually lead to more money. And this is the whole idea of, of doing what? Value creation, value creation through financial and non-financial means. So in this example, the company, the company temporarily reduced financial capital to enhance intellectual capital, prioritizing long-term growth over immediate financial gain. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. A global food retailer builds a strong partnership with local farmers to source sustainable ingredients. This practice enhances which capital? Is it manufactured capital? It doesn't say anything about my physical asset. I would say that's an easy elimination. Social and relationship capital. Am I building some sort of a relationship? If I am building a strong partnership, I would keep this one on hold B. Financial capital. Um, a global food retailer builds a strong partnership. It doesn't say anything about profit or revenue, just strong relationship. I would say I will, I will eliminate C. Natural capital, uh, and what, what the natural capital is natural resources. Uh, not necessary. I am dealing with the farmers. The farmers might have the natural resources, but it's not enhancing my natural resources. I would say the best answer is B, social and relationship capital. If I'm building strong partnership with local farmers, I am building a strong relationship with my community, social capital, my relationship with people who operates, especially 
if they are one of my suppliers that's even better so the answer is B that's the best answer what should you do now you want to go to Farhat lectures look at additional MCQs especially if you're studying for your CMA exam CPA exam accounting courses finance courses or some sort of a professional certification invest in yourself Farhat lectures is always here to help